Hello everybody and welcome back to Color Girl Quilts on YouTube. I am so excited today to have a guest and Cassandra Beaver is one of my good sewing friends and she is also an award-winning quilter. She enters her creative modern quilts in QuiltCon and multiple AQS shows throughout the year. She's won awards at big shows like Paducah and at QuiltCon and lots of others. So. Um, the thing that I'm really excited about Cassandra is that she has been working on a quilt with full circles using the classic curves ruler. This is a design that she created herself and in usual Cassandra fashion, it is amazing. And honestly, when I saw her start talking about uh, making these blocks and showing them, I couldn't figure out how she was doing it. They looked so complex and so difficult. And so I asked her to show me the technique so that I could share it with all of you. And while this is a rather advanced technique, it can be applied to more simple projects as well. I'll come back and talk a little bit after Cassandra shows us what she's doing. I also want to link to Cassandra's website and blog. She is the notsodramaticlife.com and I will put a link in the bottom. Um, in the comments right below this video. So scroll down and uh, be sure and go visit her website and see the other things she's making. You'll be really impressed, especially with what she does with thread and machine quilting. She's amazing. So let's see what Cassandra's making, how she's doing it, and I'll see you again in a minute. I pieced this together, and this is gonna be the center of my circle. And I've pressed it so that I can fold it into fourths. And once that's folded, I'm lining up the ruler and I've added a quarter inch piece of tape uh, to account for where the seam allowance would have been if I was doing four circles instead of one. I am I've got everything lined up, and I want to go for the four and a half inch line for this one. Cut that. When I open it up, I have this circle ready to go, and it's going to be set into the larger block. So you folded this one in quarters too and pressed it? Yes, so this was what I had cut before and I cut this one on the four and a half inch line. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. So you want to make sure that you have your folded edges to line up with the edges that I've taped and I've moved into the concave curve line. I'm lining it all up on the inside edge of my quarter inch tape. And this makes the hole in this fabric a half inch smaller than the piece that you're going to set into it, and that's how you get your seam allowance. Exactly. So I'm cutting in that same four and a half inch. It actually ends up being a whole inch because you have a half inch seam allowance all the way around. It does, yes. So I'm getting rid of that center for the time being. Now I can open this up. and I can decide where to place my inner circle. So I can rotate it around and I'm gonna match up my press lines. If I decide that I want something on an angle that's different though, I can always go back and put new press lines on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you line it up so you sew it evenly. Yes. So I think I'm going to align it like this for this particular circle. And so then I'm going to pin and I like to have the concave circle on top and so these four points are the most important so I do those first
And now this is going to be very similar. Once you have these points marked, the rest of the pinning process will be very similar to how you would do a regular curve that you're only doing a quarter of the circle. Yeah, you just match up. You make sure that the edges of the fabric stay lined up and you, it, it fits perfectly because of the way you added that half inch all the way around. Yes. Okay, so it's all completely pinned. Yes, and I'm going to next sew a quarter inch away from the edge and I'm going to sew it with the concave curve side up. Okay, and that way you can ease the fullness of the fabric and prevent any Yes, wrinkles I don't want any or... bubbling on the, um, when, with all the fullness, I don't want it to bubble under or turn under. So yeah. I think I decrease the likelihood of that happening when I have this side up. Mm -hmm. Do you use a quarter inch foot? I do. I use my quarter inch foot probably more than I use the standard foot. Oh. So I'm just choosing a spot on the circle because this is going to be one continuous seam. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you start. And I don't uh, bother to back stitch because I'm going to be sewing over the seam, uh, the beginning of my seam when I get to around the circle. So do you just take the pins out as you approach them? I do. I don't like to sew over pins. It can throw out the timing of your machine. And this is just something that you're going to take your time doing. And I'm not worried that all my fabric is bunched down here. I really am only paying close attention to what is going on near my needle. So I just try to keep the inch or so in front of my presser foot, nice and flat. And with my left hand, I'm also feeling through the fabric to make sure that I don't feel any extra fullness. Yeah, I don't sew any it. wrinkles into the yes. bottom piece. So that I can usually detect if I'm sewing through too many layers. You want to catch that as soon as possible if it does happen. Okay, now we're coming around to the yep. very last. We are about to hit the very end here. And still keeping that quarter inch seam allowance. You see that we're, as we approach, we're coming right in line with where we previously sewed. I do take a couple of stitches, uh, a back of back stitches, just to lock that in. And then open it up. And right now it still looks a little bubbly, but we're going to take it over to the iron. Yeah, to, it'll smooth right yes. out. Let's go to the iron. Uh, circle. I try to press outward towards what was our concave curve. I find that it usually lays better. Occasionally you're going to find something that doesn't lay as nicely and you want to press it towards the center. Yeah, I always press toward the concave too. I find that if you do it toward the inside, you get more puffiness. And so I worry about, about a quarter of the circle at one time. And I do have a steam iron, and I'm just doing a very light press to start. I work my way around. And once I have my first press done, it's still not perfect, but I like to use a nice light spritz of best press or flatter or one of those starch alternatives and that dampens the fabric and makes it a little bit more malleable and then it will help that shrink into place and I'm not pushing my iron I'm kind of picking it up and setting it down and this is one of those things that does take a little bit of time, but it's usually well worth the effort. Yeah, they come out really nice and flat. And so the steam's still on, and between the steam and the best press, we're getting flatter here. And we'll probably do one more spray of best press on this. Let's see, it's a lot flatter than it was the first, mm -hmm. so I'll give it one more spray and that should take out the rest of the, that little bit of fullness. If you do end up with a tiny amount, that's probably going to quilt out, especially if you use a 
puffy or batting. I like to use a wool. So. Yeah, the texture from the quilting hides any any puffiness. Yeah. Or so if there's a, you might have. a minor amount of fullness there, you're not going to need to worry about it long term. You don't want to. If I pulled, if I hadn't taken the time to press it, it'd be really hard to quilt out. Um, well, it's tiny pretty, bit. It's is, pretty darn flat to me. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you, Cassandra. This Thanks. is amazing. What a beautiful technique and just incredible blocks. I can't wait to see the quilt all finish. I'm very excited about this one. So what did you think? Aren't Cassandra's circle blocks amazing? I think she is so creative and I love how she's making each of the blocks different. So I took some still photos of some of the blocks that she has made so far. I'm going to flip through those a little bit here in the video and show you to give you some ideas and then we'll just have to wait and see until she has it all finished and we can see the whole thing. What did you think? You think you can do that for your next quilt? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm even ready to create some of those little tiny pieces and all of those angles and all of those circles, but I do love it and I, I just think Cassandra is amazing and I can't wait to see how the, the finished product looks. But don't be overwhelmed. The technique might look complex in the way that Cassandra is using it, but it can also be applied to much simpler blocks. There's a couple of things that I want to reiterate from what Cassandra was talking about. I love her idea of adding the tape to the classic curves ruler. Use quarter inch sewing tape or I accidentally, I actually just had painter's tape so I cut mine in quarter inch strips and add to it. This is going to do a couple of great things. Like Cassandra mentioned, it adjusts your seam allowance for doing a full circle so that it takes out the, the seam allowance that's already accounted for in the ruler for doing quarter circles. So ordinarily you'd make a quarter circle block that would include the seam allowance on the inside angle of your circle and then you sew them together and you get a full circle. When you cut the fabric into a full circle you don't need those seam allowances on the inside and that's what the tape accounts for. So watch what Cassandra's doing when she's doing her cutting and it totally makes sense. So I love that idea. The other thing that the tape really likes that was the first thing I thought of when I saw her ruler before she told me why it was there was that it really makes it easy to see the numbers and markings on the ruler. So I like that aspect of it too so that if you're working on dark fabric since the ruler is clear and the markings are black using the tape is going to make it a lot easier to see the markings on the ruler. The tape is also a little bit textured because it's masking tape and so that gives you a little bit of gri grip to prevent your ruler from slipping around when you're using it for cutting. So really useful idea. I love it. I'm going to leave the tape on mine even when I'm not doing circles. So I told you that I was going to show you um, a little bit more basic use for the technique that Cassandra just showed us. So one way that one one reason that you may want to make blocks with full circles is when you have really large scale fabrics. For example, I made this sample with fabric that had big motifs in it like swans and tigers and big flowers. I wanted to create a design that emphasized the beauty of the prints, so I didn't want to cut them up a lot. The circle technique is perfect in that situation. So it gives you something a little more interesting than just a square or a rectangle, which there's nothing wrong with that, but circles are really a lot of fun and can give you um, a little bit more dynamic design if you want to try that out. So like Cassandra's circles were pieced and her background was pieced and she had really a lot going on. For this design, all you need to do is take one single piece of fabric, cut the circle out, take one single piece of background fabric, cut the hole in it, pin it, just like Cassandra said, and it will um, give you that full circle block. And um, really fun effect. These simple ones are a good way to practice, get really good at the technique, 
and then you can move on to something as crazy as Cassandra's quilt. So I'm excited to see hers finished. Hopefully when she gets it done, maybe we can go visit her again and have her show us. I'm sure she's going to do some amazing quilting on it too. And watch for that one at QuiltCon in the spring. I bet it'll be there. So I hope that you've liked this tutorial and that you'll try it out and apply it to your, your own quilt. And um, be sure and leave me a comment and let me know what you think, if you have any questions or suggestions. And I appreciate you being here. I'll see you later. If you're a colorful quilter, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you'll be notified whenever there's a new video. I'd love to have you join me and sew along.